your brother, don't you? Yes. And if you had a brother, you could understand. <laughs> well, I, I've got family. I think I understand. I, just, I, I didn't come here to argue with you. Um, then why did you come? I just, I feel sorry for you. you got to, I, it must hurt like hell. Not at all. The whole thing is a farce. It's, it's laughable. Well, I feel sorry for you, but I don't feel much sympathy for him. You know, brother, you got what's coming. You've been life. waiting for Alan's come up for three years, haven't you? Uh, you and everybody else in this town who hates him. Well, we are used to people lining up to take pot shots at us. Al, not this late. Come on. I mean, you got a heart. That guy has a stone word. Oh, come on. I'm not going to listen to another word of this. You know what? You're going to find out when the judge comes out and she's in the rules. There's absolutely no grounds for trial. You know what? All I was going to say was I hope he'd learned his lesson this time. I really don't need to thank him. I'm a fair weather friend to be here from the beginning. I'm afraid you're going to have to wait in the witness room until you're called. Oh, I, I didn't realize. How long will that be? It depends how long the defense takes for presenting a motion. To do what? I can't say. This guard right here will show you where you can wait. All rise for Judge Helen Jordan. Please be seated. In the matter of the people versus Alan Spaulding, this is a preliminary hearing to determine if there are grounds for a trial. Bailiff, read the charges. The people are charging Alan Spaulding with the obstruction of justice and aiding and abetting a fugitive. I motion to dismiss, Your Honor. I have your motion, Mr. Dickerson. Yes, but if I may elaborate, Your Honor. Briefly. No proof has been presented to indicate that any act on my client's part obstructed justice. Now, the aiding and abetting charges have all been pulled out of some incredibly prejudicial hat. It's all just sleight of hand. And the man in question, the man that my client is accused of aiding and abetting, Brent Lawrence, was never proven to be a criminal. Well, I have the police records here, Counselor. They certainly indicate that they conducted an extensive search for Mr. Lawrence. Brent Lawrence was never found guilty in a court of law. Perhaps because he died before he could be apprehended. I don't think you want to argue with guilt or innocence in no, my court. No, Your Honor, I do not. Motion to dismiss? But, Your Denied. Honor, I just believe We that... will proceed with the hearing. Mr. Robinson, call your first witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. The people call Detective Patrick Cutter. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Be seated. You're a detective with the Springfield Police Department, are you not, sir? Yes, sir, I am. In fact, you headed up the manhunt for the alleged rapist, Brent Lawrence, did you not? Yes, sir, I did. But, unfortunately, he eluded capture. Yes, sir, he did. Could you tell the court how that happened? Well, Mr. Lawrence has a history of violence, especially towards women. Objection. Alleged violence, Your Honor. Sustained. Uh, Miss Lucy Cooper alleged that Mr. Lawrence raped her, and judging from his subsequent actions, I have no reason to believe otherwise. Is there anything else, Detective? Yes, he uh, held another woman, Miss Tangie Hill, hostage at gunpoint, threatened her with her life. Objection, we only have Miss Hill's word for that. Overruled. Continue. He then proceeded to try and ambush Miss Lucy Cooper and Mr. Alan Michael Spaulding at the dock where Mr. Alan Michael Spaulding keeps his yacht. Uh, a fight ensued, and uh, Mr. Lawrence fell, uh, shot by his own gun. The two uh, assumed that he was dead. Uh, they left the scene to uh, report it, the incident to the police. Uh, my colleague, Detective Levy, showed up at the dock a little bit later, and Mr. Lawrence had departed the no, scene. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, Detective. So, though it seemed clear that Mr. Lawrence wasn't dead, you assumed that he was wounded. Oh, yes, and very dangerous. Uh, we combed the town, but we, we came up with nothing. We got a break when uh, WSPR 
set up a TV call-in show, and with the help of uh, Miss Lucy Cooper and Miss Tangy Hill, we were able to bait Mr. Lawrence into phoning in. And that's how you got it fixed on his hideout. Yes, sir, that's correct. Uh, we tracked him to a motel room on the outskirts of town, but when we arrived, he had already fled. Thank you, Detective. I have no further questions at this time, Your Honor. However, I do intend to recall the witness at a later time. Very well. Mr. Dickerson? Uh, no questions, Your Honor. You may step down, Detective. Thank you, Your Honor. You may call your next witness, Mr. Robinson. The people call Mr. Allen Michael Spalding. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help me God. Brent was dying and he knew it. So he wanted to clear his conscience, set the record straight. And the record had to do with your father. Yes, he said that my father, uh, that my father wanted to destroy me. Oh. Are you going, Mr. Salt? Yes. All right, then. Did Mr. Lawrence tell you how your father intended to destroy you? Yes, um, <clears throat> by discrediting me and Spalding the prizes. He used Brent to do that. He gave him access to the corporate records. He had him cook the books, so it made me look like I was negligent or worse. Your Honor, I have to object. This is all completely irrelevant. Well, I agree. It could be considered so at trial, but this is a hearing, and I'm allowing leeway in the testimony. Go ahead, Mr. Robinson. Thank you, Your Honor. Go on, Mr. Stone. He said that my father paid him to doctor the books. Oh. This man who rates us that I love. Your Honor, this is nothing more than the wildest speculation, supposition, and conjecture. At least one of those is correct, Mr. Dickerson. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. Spaulding, during your conversation with the dying man, Something else happened. What was that? Yes, um, uh, Brent's sister arrived, uh, Cassie Lawrence. And what did Cassie Lawrence tell you? She told me that my father had bribed her to get Brent out of the country, provided her with airline tickets and fake passports, and promised to pay them a, a great sum of money. They were to start new lives, both Brent and Cassie Lawrence, out of the country. Is there anyone else? Who can corroborate this besides Miss Lawrence? Yes, sir. And who might that be? My father, Alan Spaulding. Your father, Alan Spaulding, confirmed that in fact what Brett and Cassie Lawrence told you was the truth. Yes, he did. He told me that their accusations were true. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Your witness, Mr. Dickerson. Yeah. Mr. Spaulding, isn't it true that your testimony is simply a product of your anger and resentment against your father? No. Well, things haven't been going well for you professionally, and you believe that your girlfriend had been raped. She was raped. Are you trying to say that that never happened? I'm saying that your accusation that Brent Lawrence is working on your father's behalf has no foundation. My father admitted it. We have only your word for it. There's no proof. Nothing to support your contention. Now, the only thing that is clear is that you're practically willing to say anything to discredit your father. Now, I do realize that fathers and sons have complicated relationships, but I don't understand why this is... Your Honor, I thought this was supposed to be a cross-examination. Instead, we're all being treated to an introduction to Psych 1, passing as an opening statement. <laughs> well, I had to listen to yours. Okay, stop it. Stop it. Both of you, you will show this court some respect. You're both officers of the court. Behave as such. I apologize, Your Honor. You can continue your cross-examination, Counselor, but please confine it to questions. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Spaulding, did anyone else witness Brent's dying confession? I told you. Did anyone else hear him name Alan Spaulding? I told you. 
That's right, Brent's sister, right? Cassie Lawrence. But you see, Cassie Lawrence is conveniently missing. Now, can you talk to us about that? About Cassie Lawrence being missing. I'm not sure I know what you're asking. Okay, well, Your Honor, I'd like to uh, offer Defense Exhibit A. What is it, Mr. Dickerson? It's a check. It's signed by Alan Michael Spaulding, and it's made out to Cassie Lawrence. Oh. Oh. Mr. Spaulding, this is your signature, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mm. Now I'm curious, because I want to know why it is that you would write out a check to Cassie Lawrence. I mean, this is somebody that you barely knew. Was it perhaps by her silence? Hmm? No, no, no. It was because I was crying. I'm sorry for, for her brother, brother who my father, I object. You're bathroom the witness. Stand back, Mr. Dickerson. You're standing too close. You're not allowing the witness to answer. You're asking four-part questions. I apologize. I don't want apologies. I want a proper cross. Certainly, yeah. Isn't it true, Mrs. Spalding, that you and your father have had problems over the years? Yes. Mm -hmm. Fundamental difference? There's no secret to that. Well, then let's get to the bottom line here. You loathe your father. No. Weren't you responsible for putting him in prison five years ago? Yes or no, Mr. Spalding? Your Honor, the witness is being unresponsive. I can't answer that. That's it. It's not, a yes, it's not a yes or no question. Well, isn't it true that you have always resented the fact that your father favored your older brother? Isn't it true that you always felt that your father never respected you? Isn't it true, Alan Michael Spaulding, that deep down in your gut, yes, always the yes, your father? Yes, yes! Yes, it's true. WSBR. I think I need a full crew down here. Wouldn't want to miss the moment when the criminal and the story walk. Don't worry, Sid. I'll spell your name right. Alan, drink your heart, Todd. Why does it have to come to this, Alex? It was absolutely brilliant. We're going to win. At the cost of losing two people who love me. Have love. You have me. Please, don't give up now. Come on, Doc. I mean, Sid destroyed Alan Michael on this stand. He's going to do the same thing to Ted. Thank you. Alan, where are you going? Alan. Alan, you got to What are you doing here? Just give me, just give me a minute. That's all I ask. Alan, 
Alan, I, you, I will call the guard. Look, I just want to warn you not to take the stand. You did not see Sid with Alan Michael. He established him. He'll be even stronger with you. Stop trying to get me not to testify. For your own sake, don't make me do this. Why do we have to destroy each other, Tangy? Do you hate me that much? All rise. Please be seated. Mr. Dickerson. Yes. I note the absence of your client. Why isn't he here? Uh, Your Honor, I, I believe my client went out for, for some water. Your Honor, the people must object to any delay uh, of this sort. My office is swamped with cases, as what you well know, and Mr. Dickerson himself invoked the right to a speedy trial. Well, that's enough. I'll handle it, Counselor. Mr. Dickerson, I suggest that you go out and find your client and bring him back here. Yes, Your Honor. Alex, where did Alan go? I have no idea. Oh. to call in back up. Did you hear that, Stu? Make sure everybody's computers are warmed up, okay? Because we're going to have an extra thick edition tonight. Well, hold on for a minute. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Look, off the record. Did anybody see Alan? Have you lost your client? Did you see him or not? Not. Thank you. Ah, uh, Stu, I'll, I'll call you back. That was interesting. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard that. I, I saw Alan walk out of here a little while Where ago. Where did he go? I have no idea. What are you? What kind of reporter am I? Are you telling me you're concerned about Sid's tactics? Whatever he dishes out, I can take. You don't know that for sure, Tim. If you don't leave right now, I'm going to tell them you were trying to influence my testimony. You say that with such conviction. I mean it. Not in your heart, you don't. Then you don't know me as well as you think you do. Tangie, there's still time to walk away. You don't know something terribly destructive is going on in there. Alan Michael, I saw it in his eyes. The cost of turning on his own father. You need to tell me you care about your son. Look, I know I brought this on myself. What's past is past. I can't change that. All we have is the future. What are you asking for me? Tenji, give me a chance. On a new beginning. Only you can give me that and only you can take it away from me. It's that simple. I can see it in your eyes. You don't want to send me to prison. phrase it, Your Honor. Isn't it true that each one of these relationships ended unhappily, Miss Hill, with all three men rejecting you? Nobody rejected me. And when Alan Spaulding became the latest in a long line of suitors to spurn you, you decided to get back at him, didn't you? No. Oh, Miss Hill, you became sick and tired of the fact that you kept being dumped on by these powerful men. So you decided to create this whole incredible you story to anything. try to hurt I did Alan not make up this Who story. raised you, Miss Hill? My parents. Okay. Now, who raised you when they were sentenced to prison as traitors to their country? Roger Thorpe. Roger Thorpe. Now, are you aware that Roger Thorpe considers Mr. Spaulding to be a bitter enemy? It goes both ways. Really? So how would you categorize their relationship? Do you know they hate each other? Mm-hmm. You love Roger Thorpe, don't you? I care for him. I think he's a good man. Yeah, and you're grateful to him? Yes. Yeah, right? and you're loyal to him, even to all those close friends of yours that try to turn you against him, I right? think it's happened once or twice. Uh-huh. His battles are your battles, correct? Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Roger Thorpe used to be president of Spalding Enterprises, correct? Yes. 
Mm -hmm. And when he was out of there, he wanted it back. Did Objection, he not? Your Honor. How can the witness possibly know what Mr. Forbes does or does not want? And more importantly, how is that relevant to this case? Sustained. Had Roger Forbes even told you that it was his dream to one day win back the company that he once ran? I suppose it's Yes or no, Miss Hill? Yes. You want Mr. Thorpe to be happy, don't you? Of course I do. Yes, you feel you owe him, don't you? In some way. In some ways. And you want to repay him for that kindness, I assume. Yes. Right, and this is why you decided to try to undermine Alan Spaulding. Isn't that true, what? Mrs. Hill? Isn't this all about helping your surrogate father get what he wants? No, it's not true. I mean, none of that's true. Alan told me the whole story. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Redirect, Mr. Robinson. Yes, Your Honor. Please. Miss Hill, is it true that Alan Spaulding came to see you last night? Yes, he did. In an attempt to persuade you not to testify today? Yes, that's right. Did he urge you to run away with him? To go with him to Europe where he would be safe from prosecution? Yes, he did. And how did you respond? I said no. I have no further questions or witnesses, Your Honor. May I remind the court that I need not present enough evidence to convict Alan Spaulding merely enough to bring him to trial. No reminder necessary, Mr. Robinson. Your Honor, the court has heard testimony from two witnesses to whom Mr. Spaulding himself made admissions of his guilt. We feel we have a strong enough case to bind the defendant for trial. Mr. Dickerson? Your Honor, these two witnesses have the same motive to want to see my client hurt. Every word out of their mouth is filled with personal malice. I have subpoenaed a third witness, Ms. Brent Lawrence's sister. She's willing to come forward and corroborate everything that Alan Michael Spaulding and Ms. Hill have said. Your Honor, the late Brent Lawrence is an alleged rapist who admitted to framing Alan Spaulding's son. So now why wouldn't he then frame the father as well? Is that all, gentlemen? I have nothing further. We've made our case. Well, this preliminary hearing will recess so the court can make a decision as whether or not to bind Alan Spaulding to trial. I'll alert the attorneys when I'm ready to announce my decision. All rise. Yes, and he was also hurting Tangie. Well, who cares? She asked for it. Can you stop it, Alex? Because I love her. How can you possibly have everything she's just done to you? She loves me, too. I... I just couldn't be the man that she wanted, that's all. Come on, I'm not going to listen to one more word. She will realize that I'm right once you've beaten all these spiteful charges. What do you want, Roger? We gave your sister a message for you. Either she didn't deliver it or you chose to ignore it. Bad call either way. What is this about, Alex? Oh, who else, Tangie? You hurt her. You're a lot better off going back to jail. Much safer than sticking around Springfield with me. My brother is going to be completely exonerated from all of the charges. I can't help remembering last Christmas Day. You set it up so it would look like I'd been unfaithful to Holly. That was the beginning of the end for us. And you, you took me for a ride with Spaulding. When I showed up at your house, you both laughed at me. Come on, listen to me. I've heard enough, thank you. Okay, yes, yes. I knew that Alan had gotten you fired, right? But I didn't know for sure until a couple of days ago. So now we both know. No, wait, 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 listen to me. In the beginning, I thought that you were just imagining, all right? I had no idea that Alan had that kind of pull. So what changed your mind? I got him to admit it. And you didn't tell me. 
Oh, Julie, come on. It was a done deal. The job was dead, and I figured why upset you more than you already were. No, you were afraid that if you told me, you would have to quit your job with Alan. No, Julie, I couldn't do that. No judge would let me walk off of a case this close to a hearing. And you, it was too late to get the job back in L L.A. anyway. Not too late to get it back. the jet and fly to Paris, huh? I'll call Antoine at de Jean with a dinner for du pauvre. Oh, please, let's, 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 let's hear a grand style. Huh? Not in the mood. Johnny, come on. You just want a great victory. If you really want to do something, Alex, leave me alone. Oh, I beg your pardon. Please, just, I want to be alone. No, Alan, come on. I'm not going to let you do this to yourself. Angie Hill's just not worth it. I don't want to discuss it. Now, look, she knew what she was getting into. She asked for it. Dad, you didn't ask for what happened today in the courtroom. Well, what did she think would happen? Did you think you and I were going to sit around idly and watch her take away another part of your life? <laughs> no, I think the conniving little wench got exactly what... Damn it, Alex! I don't want you talking about Tansy that way! You're still defending her? I can't believe this! Alex, she's been stringing you along. I warned you! You don't know what you're talking about. Yes, I do! She's pretending to write this article for the journal about you, manages to spend hours every single day with you. So that she falls for her subject, well, it's hardly difficult. You're one of the wealthiest men in the country. That's not what happened. Oh, yes, it is. She insinuated herself into your life, into our home. She became some sort of fifth columnist, some sort of spy. I mean, Mata Hari had nothing on her, I'll tell you. Quiet. No, really, why? Quiet. Why did she hang around here finding out so much information, then she turned right around and used it on you? That girl wanted you back in jail. And Alan, she came this close to getting you there. And if you think she's sitting around thinking about you, you are dead wrong. No, she's just mad as hell because she didn't nail you to the wall. She's probably right there at the journal now with my whatever son. Cooking up some new scheme to bring down this family. And you know, you know what? We have to constantly defend ourselves against people who were supposedly are closest to us. You know, Alan, that is tragic. You and Nick will patch up things in time. Sure. Sure. And that's what you're wishing for you and Tangie. But, Alan, please don't be such a fool. That girl is nothing more than a common little... I warned you, Alex. Don't talk about her that way. 
Well, why not? It's the truth. You know, Alex, Tangy is more woman than you will ever be. It's true. After all I've done for you, you should be on your knees. Begging, honestly, Alan, I've I took to practically every asset I had and stuck it in a neat little bundle for you. I would have done anything for you. I don't owe you a damn thing, Alex. All right, all right. Maybe you're a little angry, but you really don't need to take it out on me. When will you learn, Alex? When will you stop being threatened by every woman that comes into my life? You're mad. You're just mad because I am right, and oh, you hate to admit that. <laughs> Roger. Roger! I lost Tanji. And I lost my son. So you have me. That's cold comfort, Alex. He would have loved me enough. God help me, Holly. I still love him.
dry. It's a whole new kind of antiperspirant. A soft solid. Just two clicks, and it goes on dry to keep you ultra dry. Look, ordinary solids can flake off. But New Sure Ultra Dry vanishes in to form an invisible layer of protection that keeps you drier than ever before. See for yourself. New Sure Ultra Dry goes on dry, keeps you... A reluctant hero. I just hope you don't expect me to do something I can't do. Willing to stand between warring enemies. Christopher Reeve, The Price of Peace, tonight. Sometimes telling the truth is a matter of life and death. The city lost the hero today. That exclusive was yours. Mary Tyler Moore, Madeline Kahn, New York News, this fall. Tell us what you think. Call our viewer feedback line. hard for the truth in a city where deadlines are life and death. New York News, coming Thursdays to CBS.